What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's edition of the All Things Georgia Call-In Show, presented by UJSports.com. I'm your host, Paul Meharry, joined with my co-host, Andy Stowe, and my other co-host, Eddie from Ackworth. <laughs> and then also, we've got uh, the Atlanta Braves hitting coach in here with us, Bill Shanks, <laughs> joining us uh, to have a good time tonight. Guys, like we do every show, if you're, it's your first time watching, you don't know, but a lot of you know. Let us know where you're watching from. We'll shout it out up on the screen. If you're a first-time watcher, we'll uh, we'll shout you out too and see if your city's a real one or not. And uh, also, before we get going, your comments mean the world to us. They help this show go smoothly. If it was Andy and I having a talk all, all show, it just wouldn't flow. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> not, we'd be bored over here. So, guys, we appreciate all comments and uh, concerns about my health or, or Eddie's health as well. well. We'll get those on the show as well. But before we get started... <laughs> Bill Shanks, the man, the myth, the legend, back again for another uh, Sunday night show with us. We appreciate you. You've got a lot of baseball to talk about tonight. How's your weekend gone so far, sir? Pretty crappy, but it was better today when the Bulldogs won. And uh, it would have been, I would have been jumping off the bridge down the road there if they had lost today. But thankfully, it was uh, it was a good day. A big win for the Dogs. And uh, can't wait to find out. Um, uh, seven o'clock tomorrow, evidently, is going to be the time for the game. Oh, it's been announced. Okay, that's yep. it, okay. I, I figured that was going to get announced while we were on the show. I figured yeah. also Georgia was probably going to get that noon slot if Florida Clemson went to game three. So, yeah, Jeff, uh, Jeff just tweeted seven o'clock. That's what Jeff that's good. That's, that's awesome. good. Superstations.com, 12 to one o'clock every day. Hey, a little self promo. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Eddie, what you doing? What you doing? Just uh, I. I was hoping to come on here and say baseball is a funny sport because Saturday was just brutally awful as a baseball fan, dogs and braves. And I wanted to say it's such a funny sport because I feel so great about it today after watching what I watched. Now, one of the th- the three things came true, right? The dogs ended up at, uh, winning and going to a game three. But, man, braves can't get out of their own way, can they? Eddie, have you been in the tanning bed again? <laughs> My pool. <laughs> That's that's the richest move. That's the richest move he could do. He pointed to the pool. And just yeah. said, I mean, brother. you look like Richard Pryor tonight. He looks dark. He does look dark. Good. Before the I, fire. Before. I get really tan. It's that Native American blood we talked about, Bill. That's right. That's right. And then we've got uh, Andy Stowe up there in his uh, Hawaiian shirt. Not yeah, Hawaiian. Well, you 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 need a lay on you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about, but yes, I maybe I need to lay on me. So yes, I'm rocking the Hawaiian shirt tonight. So I, I'm. I figured, why not? It's close Did you to get the that from Walmart. No, Old Navy. So high class. Oh, high hey, you were close, Bill. You were close. <laughs> yeah, you were close. I yeah. said to get two free. That's really good. <laughs> That's right. It's a good deal. Yours is on the way. I mailed it to you. So it'll hey, be awesome. Number. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, getting two free, the boys down in Athens get one more free game tomorrow. That's going to be uh, like. Uh, Bill just said 7 p.m., which I, I don't know about you guys. I think Georgia kind of got a raw deal having having both games at noon. Luckily, it was on the weekend, though, but they were talking about having a noon game on a Monday. Yeah. yeah. Like that. I don't know if anybody – I guess now nobody's going to have that noon slot, up, apparently, but that's that's a rough get on a Monday. Like you've got this excitement, all of this, you know, build up. And then game three, oh, hey, it's Monday at noon, guys. Sorry, you're going to be at work. But, uh, yeah, we, we've got to play the game. I was worried about the attendance, too, if we go – if that yeah. happens. You know? it, it, I mean, it changes into a neutral field at that, at that Yeah, point I would think the attendance would be way down. People got to work and stuff. You know, they weren't prepared for that. I don't know. It's going right. to be a great, great game, though, tomorrow. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's been two weird, obviously, games, two blowouts, and now it kind of – watch it be two to one or something yeah, stupid yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's just how baseball goes. But, I, um, hey, look, Georgia is the home team in more ways than one, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're going to be able to have that crowd and um, be there early, be loud, um, and do everything you can to help. I, I think when Georgia got those first two runs today, NC State felt it. Mm-hmm. I, I, he hit the home run and made it five to nothing. I, I thought. You know, they were feeling a little bit like, oh, because they heard that crowd get back involved and invested again after being shell shocked yesterday with the second inning. I think they just kind of got back on and and it's like we need that to carry over into tomorrow for sure. 
Bill, I got a question. Why did they do the the home team away team thing like this in the Super Regional? Because if you get to host a Super Regional, shouldn't you get to be the home team every game? Yes, you should. And, and uh, yeah, we had trouble. I know we, me and Eddie were both trying to find out for a couple of days what the deal was. I finally had to ask Christopher Lakos um, because David was hearing something, Jeff was hearing something, and then we finally – confirmed it was uh one in three georgia was at home but there's no reason why georgia should i mean it didn't matter do they obviously yeah, right. still, it's like home field advantage yeah. you know why give nc state any 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 advantage or any type of of benefit um that's their problem not so georgia. Did, so did ncaa did the ncaa come back and say you're getting two out of three we just can't we can't have you travel to you know nc state and play a game and then come right. back and play one. was right. that i'm assuming that's that's their reasoning behind it. But I mean, Hey, it hurt probably it, it hurt Clemson pretty yes. bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. how about that? that? Was that the best game that that may be the best game I've seen yeah. in college base. That was good. No, no, that Georgia game, uh, yeah, the, that, that Georgia tech, game yeah. was, yeah. Yeah. Tech was, was something hey, special. Like Clemson and Florida. Did they have an explosion at the stadium and everybody died? What happened? Well, I was hoping for it, but no, they, they did not happen, but Florida did. Well, people I, dude, they're orange. They look any, any orange color team. I don't like them. So, I yeah, see Andy I, has paid one of his relatives to come on the show tonight and I say did. love no, the white no, shirt. That's pretty cheap. You know, hey, yeah. that's what I do. really cheap. Look, if they're going to come on and say love Ooh. the white shirt, they at least have to change their last name. Oh, Andy. my yeah, really. God. Hey, that's my it's an alias or something. What can I do? Yeah. Yeah, that's you, your, that, what is that? Your brother, sister? My sister. That's my sister. Yeah. Sister. Yeah. Thanks, Casey. You don't like hey. my this t shirt from Walmart? Thanks, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dog's father says that's a plant. It definitely yep. is. It oh, definitely no is. question. For hey, sure. Uh, hey, can you go on about 806 and say how good my shirt works? Well, I told her 807, but she got a little bit early. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, gosh. exactly. That's right. But, uh, Bill, be honest with me here because I think this is a safe space, right? Uh, how much college baseball did you watch prior to the regional of Georgia? Well, we've had – seriously, we've had the games on our station. Uh, we've probably aired – they played 59 games. We've probably had about 35 to 40 live on our station. So, as far as watching, um, you know, only a handful. I went to a game against Vanderbilt on a Friday a couple of weeks ago and did our show. I'm sure you were listening that day, Paul. I was. I was <laughs> out. And, I, and, and, I wanted to make sure you at least entered that one in. Okay, okay. But, no, I, I, I wanted to see Charlie Conant. You know, I, I really wanted to see uh, – take one day and go. And so we did our show, and Jeff and David came on, and, and we had a good time with it. But I, I, I wanted to see that team. It, it, you know, I was really – I mean, and I haven't been to a Georgia game baseball game since I did the games in 1991. I mean, Jeez. that was a long time since I've been in that stadium. Um, so yeah, it, it got my, my attention, you know, it really did. And it, and it was fun to see what was going on with the environment, the van, you know, Vanderbilt, what, what they usually are obviously, but I mean, it was still Vanderbilt. So it was a lot of, of, of fans there and people were interested how George would do that was in the middle of Charlie's home run, I think that was game five of his eight games uh, yeah. in a row that he that he had a home run. So, you know, I, I I was I was paying attention. You know, early in the season, I was I was driving to Waycross and um, George was on, and and I listened to the game. I can't remember who they were playing. It was a conference game. It was one of their first conference games. One Kentucky when they lost three in a row. It was a, it was a, well, no, maybe it wasn't a conference game. Anyway, it was an early game, and and. I listened to the whole game driving down to Waycross and I heard David and, and Jeff and you could just tell it was something special about that team. You could tell yep. their pitching was a little bit of a, of a struggle, right? That there was not the pitching that you would like for them to have, but you could tell that, man, they had some heart on this team. And I think Paul, this is one, a great transfer portal story. We're That's talking cool. about 18 players from the portal. We're talking about 10 freshmen, and a new head coach. And, you know, I always say, regardless of the sport, when you've got a new head coach, like in 2016, I didn't give a damn what Kirby Smart and the Georgia football team did. I didn't care. It didn't matter. I wasn't hurt when they lost to Vanderbilt. I, hey, who cares? Because that first-year coach has always got a little bit of a curve because of things For that sure. have to happen. Even yeah, now, man. more than ever, right, because of the transfer portal, even compared to Kirby's first, what, Kirby's first year, he had that one transfer from Alabama, right? Yeah, he's a graduate he's transfer, that's right. Smith, right. right. I mean, yeah, that was, that was it. So it was like, 
I, I don't think anybody had very many expectations this year because of the fact that there were so many new players. And, okay, you had Charlie back. You had Collins back. But what else? Well, was that with Charlie Condon his best recruit, Bill? Like, because he got him to stay? Oh, no question. Yeah. No question about it. Because Charlie could have left, and I think that was the first thing that he did. But I, I think this is a great story. I mean, I want him to win tomorrow. No question. We all, all four of us do. And everybody listening and watching does. But if, even if they don't, it's been an unbelievable year. But how mm-hmm. great would it be to yeah. say you got the College World Series? You know, that, that's that's going to be even more special. Well, that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at, Eddie, is you go on to UGASports.com, right? Normally around this time, you know, <laughs> I mean, we're June 9th right now. Yeah. You've got the whole first front page is normally non-dog topics. Hey, uh, where's the best place to eat in St. Simons? You know, local mm-hmm. recommendations. We're going on an Alaskan cruise. Have you been? You know, that's that's what <laughs> takes up the front page. It's all baseball right now, Eddie. Mm-hmm. And it, I, th- I think you made a great point in one of the emails or something, uh, Eddie. You said, "What a good distraction from the summer this this race, or this uh, Georgia baseball team has been." Yeah, it is, and and we've been praying for that bridge, even in basketball as well, just to get us to baseball. Well, I mean, right? and they and they got us. They, and they did. They did got somewhat. Us further but than we thought. Right? It's almost this huge lull we go through sports wise, and now, of course, we'd be ramping up recruiting and then you'll get camps around the corner so we're starting to ramp that up but you know it's it's unbelievable what what i love the most about georgia being a part of all of this is i watch i've been watching more of these playoff games if you want to call it that regional super regionals than i ever have in my life and it's it's a war it's fun to watch it's unbelievable i mean that clemson florida game today was unbelievable back and forth stuff that was going on so it's gotten me more excited about the sport as a whole but just have georgia be one of those teams who celebrates and goes to the world series how cool is that in his first year you just yeah. he's the best first year coach ever at the university of georgia who's who's better tubby who tubby was pretty good yeah yeah maybe tubby you yeah. know yeah, but right. now it is different with the with the transfer portal. Yeah, so no doubt, no doubt. Right, you know, but still, but but like you said, if they were not doing this good, would you have watched that Clemson Florida game today? No, absolutely no. not. I, no, I I'd, have been, I'd have been cutting your grass, Andy. Well, come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's exactly what Eddie said. It's like college baseball. It's it's always been there, right? Mm-hmm. And it's always been like maybe I watch a, a college World Series game. I've never. I mean, this is probably bad saying because I'm a journalist. I've never quite understood the the brackets and things like that. It's all kind of it's all been mushed to me. So it, I've I've learned a, a secondary you know love of my sport, which is baseball and college World Series and and seeing these dogs play. And I've gotten to know all the players, what they're good at, what they're not good at. And that's just I've watched maybe six or seven games, but I mean, I feel like I'm like oh, hit, you know. Collins in that situation. Oh, that's who you want it to be. You know, like I, I know these guys now, and it and it it feels a little different. Um, well, ancillary to that, if if Atlanta, this is a little bit different, but if Atlanta finally gets that next NHL team, that's kind of along that same vein. You'll start oh. paying more attention to hockey, which in the playoffs is one of the most unbelievable sports ever in the playoffs. So, but we don't pay attention to it because we don't have a we don't have a vested interest in it. Well, it's the same right. reason why I haven't cared about the big dance in March in a long time. See, you know, that's different for me, Bill. I, I love I love March Madness, and I understand that. But you know, every year, of course, spring training starting for me, Paul. So I got a little bit different priority. I don't I don't have anything to share it with, right? Right. But, but for so many years in March, when everybody's getting their bracket ready, I mean, I've been out down at spring training and I've been handed a bracket by Braves players. Here, fill it now. I could <laughs> piss in the wind and get as much right yeah. in that because college basketball has not been relevant for me for a long time. I have to apologize. Eddie's heard me probably on my show say, look, I, you know, I'm not going to try to fake this. I'm yeah. not a college basketball guy. Because my team has not been relevant in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I last went to a, to a Georgia basketball game, like maybe in 2012, Georgia-Florida oh. basketball game on a Tuesday night. Um, and, and But but when, you're, when your team is not relevant, it's harder, unless you just love the sport, unless mm-hmm. you just invest in the sport, which has been harder, I think, for a lot of people to do that, Paul, even before the portal because of the ones and duns yep. and the way oh, yeah. college basketball changes. Now it's even more because what was there 
1,800 people in the college basketball transfer portal this year. Yeah. But I haven't been invested in college basketball in a long time because the Georgia Bulldogs have not been good. And baseball, they've been a little bit better, I guess, to a certain extent. But they haven't had my attention, so therefore neither has the sport, you know. And so I I think that is great in that – you know, if Georgia gets knocked out tomorrow, will I pay more attention this year to the College World Series than I have in the past? Probably, because mm-hmm. I wonder, well, could Georgia have done anything in the College World Series? Could yep. they have played against Kentucky or somebody like right, that? You're going to follow. You're going to follow that NC State track and yep. see how far they That's go. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. But when you don't have, when your team is not involved, the relevance <laughs> is just not as clear and present, and that's what has impacted me. And I hate that. I, I, I mean, I. I t- say all the time i love georgia basketball so much we did when i was in school a college basketball recruiting show nice. on the georgia uh, on on the athens student station wog who the hell does a college basketball recruiting <laughs> show in 1990 right yeah. i mean oh great charles claxon's down to two teams georgia and you know bfu well yeah. we were doing that but i love that and followed that but now you know, now I've got a file on this computer right here about the transfers for Georgia basketball for next yeah. year because yeah. I'm more involved. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love it. Real quick, I, I'm I'm uh, being a bad host here. I'm not getting to the comments, so I apologize. Again? Real quick. Uh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I call. <clears throat> uh, Marshall says, Bill, did you call the two games in the championship 1990 season? No, 91 when they sucked. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> 91. I guess this is the inside joke here from old AP it says build that water and weight cross tastes better. Question mark. Yeah, you know, um moonshine is uh flavored wow. differently in, in weight cross. There we go. Uh and then hey, we all got a comment there from you go. there. And there you and go. also Thanks, Marshall said we, we look great as well. Thanks, I guys. love this. I love this because you asked me this three months ago, guys. This question from Big Hoss. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be like, I, I couldn't tell yeah. you, brother. Who? Right. who? Yeah. You know. What? Uh, he says, I wonder if Slate or Trey. So that Slate offered Trey is in the three hole instead of Goldstein. And do you put? Was it? It's. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, Tate. It's Tate's. Tate's. It's Tate's. Yeah. You're right. Thank you. Tate's in Jordan in the lineup instead of Goldstein and Chadwick. I I like I like Trey getting as many at bats as he can. That kid mm-hmm. is the next. He He's is. got that swagger that we will get to later on the show that the Braves are missing. Like that's- I, had, I got a text from Ben Bachman, and he said he said he should play. He's like Goldstein does not need to be playing. So yeah, I mean he's. Hey. I need to wear a button down with the buttons open to here next show, right? Oh, yeah. to I almost up. did that just because yeah. they were you talking about. Have. You should um, have. Please invite Roddy on that week when you do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean. Trey in the three hole, yeah, because he was batting uh, fifth, you know, today, and he had that home run. And uh, that you know, kid is fearless. He's yeah. fearless. Yeah, he's going to be the next it. big thing. He's only a freshman, a true freshman. Like you don't see that. Also, I didn't. I mean, I, again, color me a uh, clueless, whatever you'd like to do. I didn't know freshmen didn't play as much in college baseball as they do in basketball or, or hell, even football, and to that matter. I mean, there, there's not that many freshmen playing, and, and Trey Phelps being able to get out there and play like he is 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 uh, quite wild. Uh, Alex Pace said, who won the Florida game? Florida did. Walked it off uh, in Clemson's territory in their stadium there. Um, what a wild, wild game that was to, to watch. Uh, Paul, talk about, talking about Georgia for uh, – bring back Adam, sorry. Um, talk about the Georgia – if Georgia does win, and then so they will go on to play the winner of the, of the Kentucky-Oregon State Series. Do any of y'all have any – Thoughts about who you would prefer to play? Do you? I think you probably want to play Oregon. Oh, you probably yeah. want to play Oregon State. You think uh, so? As opposed to Kentucky, but Oregon State. I watched them. Uh, what was it last night? They've got a pretty good, uh, solid first pitcher. That pitcher well, they, was pretty. And they're yeah. going to have the number one player in the draft as well. So ah, that's the true. rumor. That's the rumor. Charlie Condon has something to say about that. Wow. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. But you want to talk about star power in one game? Mm-hmm. The Oregon State kid, and then you got yeah. Charlie Condon. Yeah. That, that would must be cool. watch baseball at that point, Eddie. Yeah. Can we can we break in here to say that Georgia has a verbal commitment on football, real quick? Oh, who's that? Uh, Christian Breaking Garrett. Uh, oh. Is that is that the Prince Avenue kid, Paul? It is. Yeah, Four Christian Garrett, the lineman. Yep, I think Prince Avenue, isn't it? It is. It is. Uh, so yeah, he was uh, on his official visit this past weekend, and uh, we had him pinned to Georgia, but he makes it official now. And uh, four-star D lineman out of Prince Avenue. Prince Avenue. 
of all places putting out that? some kids, man. Yeah, um, no doubt. Judge Vandegrift's no. still there? Uh, yeah, he is yeah. still there. He is. Yeah, he is. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Christian Garrett, number 232, according to Rivals, 27th in the state, 16th as his position. He's a 5'8", uh, four-star, uh, 6'4", 285 defensive tackle. So mm. then that's not the only one. Uh, not to give it away because rumors versus facts will be on tomorrow, but there are plenty more. Uh, that will be jumping onto the boat soon. This is, for whatever reason, this seems to be the time that Georgia starts getting all their commits. So, well, they had the uh, official visit weekend this weekend, right? Yeah, right. they have one this weekend. They have one last weekend. It's right. it's really starting to to jump off. So, wait. So, Paul, you know who's coming next? I do. Yeah. Well, Ooh. let's go into a private. Can we have an executive session? <laughs> yeah, yeah. After the show, no, no. <laughs> and, do that. Everybody Can't else, yes. Yeah, so, well, well, me, me, and Andy and Eddie want to know right damn now. Come on. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny is uh, I I own a construction business and I helped uh, Trent Smallwood's grandmother get a new roof on her house. And Trent was out there, my business partner who I've grown up with. I mean, we're, we've been best friends since we were 14 years old. Um, he goes up to Trent and says, I just want you to know, Trent, Paul doesn't tell me shit out of that group chat that you guys have. And I'm pretty pissed wow. off. <laughs> I don't even tell him anything. Wow. I really don't. Um, Can and- we guess? I mean, yeah, people can guess. I'm not going to give anything away. Uh, James says, don't believe it's David Sanders Jr. So, I, Yeah, you know, is it offensive line? Is it? I don't think so, no. But there's a couple guys there on the offensive line that you should look at. Um, but, uh, you know, anyways, we'll keep moving on. That's more for rumors versus facts. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, that's, that's who, who hosts that show tomorrow? Say what? Who hosts that show tomorrow? Uh, that is uh, Roddy, Trent right. Smallwood, Jed May, Lance McCurley. So those are those oh my four, four recruiting guys. Yeah. Okay. They do have a lot of updates on the vault right now. I, I did look they earlier do. before the show, so it would probably be a good time to subscribe to UGASports.com. And guess no. what? Guess what? Real quick, shameless plug here, guys. We are on the UGA Sports channel. Free. Yes. You can sign for free right now with code DOGWATCH, and you can go read everything that's on the vault, and you can put the pieces together yourself. Holy if you're watching God. Georgia, you probably attended Georgia, or you thought about attending Georgia. You're a smart guy, smart gal. You can go read those notes, see who see who we're talking about here. <laughs> Who's so, legit? Uh, yeah. It's been so damn long since me and Eddie have been at UGA. Somebody give us a little text and let us know what it says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what? You know what's crazy is uh, I got into Georgia. I transferred to Georgia, but there's just no way in hell I, I could get in now. There's oh, me neither. Oh, Lord, at first, they would laugh me out. Of the, they, they wouldn't yeah. let me go to you know, Oconee County Junior College. They wait, they wait listed my uh, sister-in-law and she had like a 4.5, number three in her class, yeah. uh, marching band leader, captain, all this stuff. They wait listed her. I was like, yeah, that, I'm not. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and back when Bill and I went, they used to say you could just drive through campus and they'd throw a diploma in as you drove through campus. It was I got mine right here in the drawer. I mean, they just <laughs> absolutely made fun of us, right, Bill? Right. They, wait, they wait listed her. Is that like what happened to Miss Alabama last week? Oh, that's a that's interesting. What about Leighton Finley today, guys? He went six and two innings, <laughs> eight hits, one earned run, two walks, and five Ks. Kid threw over a hundred and some odd pitches. How uh, about that? So, and his arm did not fall off, right? When he hit no. that, right? so you can throw over a hundred and it doesn't fall off. Yeah, it's crazy. What's that? What's that? Uh, Dog, Dog Father's asking the question about this. This was this is oh, the okay. only thing I've ever stolen. In my life, uh, it was when Fulton County Stadium was closing, and I, I had a a, a drill, and I went on those uh, those uh, what do you call those things barricades, and I got a bunch of them. So when you see these on eBay, I might have expired. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, kid threw lights out. Remember, he also threw lights out against what was it uh, Tech as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Good. kind of like really good. He pitched that night. I was there, Paul, and I like him. He's really yeah. – I think he's going to be really good, really much better, I should say, next year with another year with the coach. You know, And he's I also think. a sophomore, right? Yeah, yeah West is going to really help that kid. I'll be interested to see what kind of what kind of draft prospect he is a year from now because I think West is – West probably just loves that kid. You know, he's got a good body. He's got his fastball. What did he top out? Maybe 94 today? He was- he was yeah. throwing 93 in the seventh inning. So, yeah, he was still okay. hitting 93. So, that's I saw 94 because when I was there, he doesn't need, he's not, he's not a hard thrower, but I like him. I think he's smart and he, he's, he's good. I like him. He's got, he's got that it factor, kind of like yeah. how we talked about with Trey Phelps. You could just tell, didn't lose his cool. Uh, yeah. and- 
how huge was it today to I was texting you guys about this about setting up the pitching for tomorrow? I mean, if he yeah. goes out there and only lasts what three innings and gives up five runs and we still end up winning the game, we've blown through a lot more pitchers than than what we need for tomorrow. He's got everything except for Finley, right? He's pretty much got every pitcher at his yeah. disposal for tomorrow. So do you now here's my question though. Do you bring Colton back? Did, were they able to find out what the heck was going on yesterday if they were if they were, you know, if he was showing them something, tipping his pitches, do they know what that is to where you would feel confident in bringing Colton back if you yeah. had to? I mean, I hope Zach pitches a perfect game for crying out loud. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think that'll be a topic for tomorrow, right? Does Colton I think so too? Yeah, you know, if in fact they need him. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that as well, and I, I, my first thought was, oh no, I don't, I don't think so. But you got everything you've got to throw on the line tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Say, God forbid, Zach goes out and gives you you know, two or three innings, right. To start the game. And then you got to go to uh, Maracna and then you got, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. you got to go down the list of that bullpen. Yeah. You might big Hoss. big Hoss is a big uh, baseball fan. So when big Hoss talks He's about our list, he says he might can give you yeah. two or three tomorrow. Well, big uh, Hoss, do you, I mean, I really do wonder though, was he tipping his pit? I mean, that was awful yesterday. Colton's really. a better pitcher than that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had to be finding something or seeing something to tip off right i mean my, my, they were just t- they were aggressive they were early in the count they were aggressive my gosh they were hitting everything in sight but i mean do you do you find out what that was or is west smart enough to know what that was and correct it before you throw him back out there against his team again did, did y'all say how many innings he had thrown the first night i'm sorry do we know colton yeah i mean he didn't last but what two innings right how, how many pitches he threw sorry oh, how many pitches. Pitches? i, I think know. Right at forty, so I'll Andy, find out. Okay. Andy, okay. Andy, Andy, the stat man can can find that for us. I would say forty pitches. He's okay to come. No, out. I think he probably threw a little more than forty, but anyways, it's it's right around that. Uh, I think he can can come back. Uh, so, I'm interested. Marshall has got to confess once stole a national rent a fence sign from construction site on campus. Paul, way to pull it back from the all things woke beauty contest. Hey, Marshall, this is what I'm here to do, brother. That's what I'm he here he to threw do. thirty eight pitches. Oh, oh okay. Good call, Eddie. So tomorrow's so, uh, a pro day for him, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. if you got to put him out there, yeah, you, you throw him out there. Yeah. Um, again, we've we've gone over this, Bill. I throw, the, I, you know what, Paul, Paul, excuse me. I throw him out there with a short leash. I throw him out there, and if something happens quick, yeah. they want to have somebody ready to go to, don't you? I mean, just in yeah. case they just got his number for whatever reason, I, th- I think you got to have somebody ready right there behind him. Don't yeah. sleep on Garrett yeah, Key, though. No Garrett Key knows his stuff, too. So, Rad yeah. can uh, – Patty Sack's awesome. That kid's yeah. really good. Yeah. So don't sleep on either one of them. Look, either way, we just spent 30 minutes in the middle yeah, of June talking about the Georgia baseball program. Exactly. So in the weeds of Georgia baseball. How about right. that? Shout out to Wes Johnson. Shout out to that whole team. Kudzu Hill was going crazy. I'm so excited for you guys that you get a 7 o'clock uh, – yeah, I was going right. to say tip. First pitch uh, – Seven o'clock first pitch instead of a noon because that was just going to be a drag. Really yeah. glad that they got that. Hopefully, uh, we can have Eddie enter back into the group chat for the game three tomorrow <laughs> night. I missed my friend. Um, he so I'm Bill, he, do it. And this kind of plays into the Braves here very well. Um, uh, Eddie's kind of turned into a pessimist, Bill. And no shit. Yeah, <laughs> and and. For whatever reason, get out nobody, of town. <sighs> yeah, so nobody wants to call him out on this, and and it, it always ends up being me. And he's my friend; he really is. I sent him. He wasn't texting today during our our uh, the Georgia game in our group chat, and I sent the "Man, I Miss My Dog" song by Little Wayne. Have you heard that one, Bill? <laughs> I didn't think so, but it's a good song. And I miss my dog. Be old, Eddie. Uh, and he just turned into a little bit of a pessimist. Is all. And well, we're calling something else on our show. Can I tell you what that is? Uh, PG thirteen. R. Ah, you already said worse. He's a bit sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So, so I called him out on it, and he just he he has quit texting us during games now. Bill, he says that he doesn't want to, but he'll go tweet. Right? He's like a little like a little child. He'll go oh, say, it, Paul, say it. Say it. Like a little bitch. <laughs> Come on, say it. No, he's way too hey, big. Andy, for that. I missed this in the show notes where this was the destroy Eddie from Ackworth. I didn't know. This is this is sponsored by Mainstain Roofing. This is the. Uh, okay. yeah. 
I, I, we no, but what I'm saying there every time. night, three to six on the Bill Shank show. What, what are you talking about? What I'm getting at here is he just turned to a little bit of a pessimist. And I would like to know, Bill, is he right for being this? Again, for the Atlanta Braves, because now we've moved on from Georgia baseball. He, he can't be a pessimist about that, although he tries. Uh, we, we reel him <laughs> back in fairly quick on that. Now, Braves baseball, I can't take I, – I, I'm telling you, I'm watching the Braves, and I'm, I'm – because Eddie doesn't he, – he still texts during the Braves games, of course, because that's when he's right. So I have to deal with Eddie here on my phone, and then on the TV I'm watching this crap, and I'm just ready to explode. So, Bill, is he right for being a pessimist about this Braves team? Oh, well, What's going on? It- this is a shocking thing that's going on, I think. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't think um, any of us expected this. Um, you go and start with a an 18-6 and six record, and you're scoring 5.95 runs per game. You're like, heck, let's just cruise on to October. Hey, same we're, thing we're, as 2023, baby. It just, it just it. moved on yeah. to the next year. It, it, it's like what, what ended not in October, what ended in September – picked up in the late latter part of March against Philadelphia. Here we go. 18 and six scoring 5.95 runs per game. It was 5.8 last year. Like you said, it was like a continuation of last year's regular season. And then in game 25, <laughs> it's just been incredible. Uh, last 39 games, they are 17 and 22, 3.48 runs per game in those last 38, 39 games. They've gone from two and a half games up to nine games back. And I, I mean, it's shocking. It is a shocking thing. And I'm trying to be patient. I'm Me trying too. to remember. And I say all the time, it is a long way to October. It is. I, I, I reminded people several times on my show that in 2021, they did not get over 500 and stay until August the 6th. Yeah. So we're two months from that, right? 60 yeah. days from that. Um, but the worst thing I think about it, Paul, is this is not fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we, we thought, especially after those first 24 games, that this was going to be just as fun as last year. Mm-hmm. 7 5 let me be right there in front of that TV. I'm going to watch the Braves score 5.85 runs per game again every single night. And this is not fun to watch. There's mm-hmm. nothing fun about it. There, there's no offense. There's no – and the bad thing about this is, I think, the worst thing, is when you are struggling offensively, your body language is so poor yeah. that people ask, my own mother is asking, why is Matt Olson on yeah. drugs all of a sudden? And I'm <laughs> like, mom, he he's not on drugs. He's just struggling. But people are going to ask those kind of questions when you go up there and you're swinging the bat and you're not making contact. And so it, this is not fun. There's nothing fun about this. I've turned it off uh, so many times recently because, because it's like, I don't want to watch it when and, and unfortunately when they scored all those runs on Her- Hurston Waldrop today, which we can talk about him too. I'm like, hell, we're not going to win. Yeah. They're not going to win. They're down seven to two. They're not, even though it was what the fourth inning, fourth they're inning. not going to yeah. win that game the way they've yeah. been going right now. And that Paul is not fun. And that's why this is just such a shocking thing that we've had. I can't remember a drop off in the middle of the year from again, so much success, 18 and six. It's like we're sitting here doing, re- you know, my God, they're on pace for 110 wins or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. They, and, and they were like, we hell record they match. Yeah. 500. You know, it's, yeah. it's a shocking thing that's happened with this team. It really is. And I, I do have to give my buddy Eddie credit because I give him a lot of shit, man. I do, but I really do. I really do care for the broad guy. shoulders. I got broad shoulders. <laughs> All right. Calm down. And we know you're big. Um, and so I think what gets me a little bit is Eddie called this. At the beginning, and I didn't want to listen to him, and I, I stayed on optimistic I, I, optimism island. I mm-hmm. stayed over there as long as I could. Eddie took yeah. the Eddie took the first boat off of optimism. The the first game that sucked. It was he a was raft. There. It yeah. was a raft. Yeah, he made his own raft. He was on pessimism island. He was over. Oh, there. it was the Dodger series. It was the Dodger series. Yeah, That's he, when he, both me and Eddie started wondering what was going on. He's already got his fire lit over there, and yeah. he stayed there. He hasn't come back. And I guess what I'm getting at here, Bill, and I want to ask Eddie this. How do we, Eddie, how do we get you back onto Optimism Island? Because the reason I ask this, this is the same team. This is the same team we saw last year, okay? 
And if you're going to go make a trade, you're going to have to you're going to have to change this team up pretty drastically. You you don't have there's no Von Grissom sitting on your bench to where you can go trade him for, uh, nope. you know, a Chris Sale type position player. Right. There's nobody in the farm system. Yeah, you've got pitchers. You want to give that up, though, seeing how Tommy John's so prevalent right. now. Do you want right. to give that up? Uh, maybe. But who's it? To, who are you going to go get? Lou, Louis Robert. You know, Louis Robert is going to cost you three guys from from your your top. Yeah, it's going to take a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, so so there's not much that can change here besides the be patient and wait. But I feel like that is running out for a lot of fans, including Eddie, then a little bit of Andy, and now Bill, and then I'm I'm jumping over there too. You're, you're starting. To, I can tell yeah. in your your pre the last day or two, you're starting to like oh crap, you're getting there. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's just Bill said it. It's just so frustrating to watch, right? It's it's not fun, as he kept saying. Last year, we would turn on the TV and I'd sit down with my dinner and. Have to be there in time to see Ronald Acuna bat. You got to see he's up first. I got to see what yeah, happens. Home run. And, and yeah. most nights it was a two to three to nothing in the first inning, and we're like, well, you know, this is this Braves is just unbelievable. They're unbeatable. They they could not stop. This year they get down two to nothing, and I'm I've got my thumb over the off button. I, I'm I'm almost ready because I'm like I ain't coming back from that. Well, the Eddie, last year he listless. If and you're watching, same, the- one more thing, it's basically the same people except for Kelmick, right? And it's could, the yeah. same people, and they were going bananas this time. Last now, we all expected it. Bill and I talked about it. the run numbers would probably come in a little bit lower this year, just naturally, right? Yeah. Well, last year, Eddie, if this You're game, the to, if it would have went to seven to two in the in the fourth inning last year, would you would have still I'd thought hang. hey, they got a shot I'd to hang. win? This. And now, when it was seven to two, I tweeted ball game. Sure, it's, it's been uh, it's been it's guess. been two nothing, and Eddie's Eddie said you know ball game, and he's been right. Yeah. Also, it, it just it just stinks a little bit. Big Hoss says, uh, Paul, and I'm going to say Paul and crew, not just me, Big Hoss. How confident are you that they'll beat the Yankees and Orioles? They're top three pitching stats. We play them on the road. This is sirens going off. Also, three series level. Yeah. Bill, how, the, the question then becomes, how do you change this around? Yeah. Because for what we've heard from Brian Snicker is – this is going to be, I think he said last night, they'll heat up eventually or something along those lines. The bats will heat up, you know, soon or, or something. Oh, do you just keep sitting around and hoping that the bats do heat up? I mean, there's not much. What I'm getting at is there's not much you can inject into this team. There's nothing. There's no Ronald Acuna sitting down on AAA waiting for his chance. You yeah. know, there's there's not that spark plug. What do you do then, Bill? I, I think you have to wait. I, and I know that's not going to be a popular answer. I know people are getting on snit for saying the same thing. I don't know what, you know, Eddie called up a month ago and wanted to change the lineup. Um, I don't know. I said it at the time it wouldn't have helped. I don't think it would have. I don't think it would now, though. I mean, obviously – and I knew, two, I knew two weeks ago when Acuna got hurt, it's like there's going to be an adjustment here. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's going to be an adjustment to kind of figure out what's what, not only for Snit the lineup, but I mean, for even for the players a little bit. Um, I, I mean, I wish Kelnick was batting first. I don't think Harris is doing a very good job of, <laughs> of, of, uh, of hitting first. Um, I, 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 um, as far as what can happen though, I mean, they're going to have, they're going to get another outfielder. I think that's, I mean, um, Duval, we all love him. He's got to go. Yeah. No. Um, or he could he could be the fourth guy. He could be the fourth outfit on the bench. You're not paying could. him much. He could. Yeah, that's right. He, I mean, he, he, he does you better than JP Martinez, who's played in 21 games in seven years. You know. Yeah, but I almost would argue that Brian Anderson, because his I like I like the versatility at first and third, could be a, a more viable yeah. piece for you than Adam okay. Duvall. And Adam yeah. Duvall is hitting 180. What? I mean, it's freaking yeah. ridiculous. And so they're going to get another outfielder. They're going to have to get another uh, another starting pitcher. The the ERA of the other starters besides the top four is over seven now. Um, so they're going to have to make some trades. They're going to have to. And, you know, I think they didn't think they were going to have to do that a couple of – three years ago, and they didn't know they had to do it until Acuna got hurt right before the All-Star right. break. Right. Yeah. And then Alex had a decision to make, buy or sell. And he decided because of one thing, run differential. He said, our run differential was better than Mets, and I knew we could win that division mm. if we had a little help. And he got the help. He got perfect help. 
They turned it on after August 6th, and they went on to win the World Series. We debated so, that on your show for a long time, Bill, by oh, ourselves. Oh, man. I'm, and because that was when they were winning and losing and winning right. and losing. Yeah. And they wouldn't, they couldn't even win two in a row. You know, think think about what we were going through then. I mean, we would literally have conversations where we were like, okay, what can they get for Max Freed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Padres might give you CJ Abrams for Max Freed yep. if if you decide to sell. That's the kind of conversation we were having. Then they'd win the next day and we're like, oh, hold the phone. Yeah. You know, and then he made six trades in two weeks and they're like, well, hell, he's going for it. So you can't change catcher. You can't change first. Uh, you no. can't change second. No. You can't change third. No. You can't change really center. No. Or left. Um, Debatable, but no. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, you got to. I like. I like Kelnick. I. I, mm-hmm. I just want to say, toot my own horn here. When when Ronald went down, Kelnick came in, had those three hits. I I sent it out. I said he should be the number one leadoff. He, he did. Yeah, he did. I've, I've been on that credit. train. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think they should. I think he should do that. I don't think he's giving a shot because the lineup has yeah, changed yeah. every game. It's right. Right. almost every game. Yeah. yeah. So I wish he'd do that. But I mean, there's only so much he can do. The manager can do. And I, I, I know people are getting on. Said, why the hell is he saying that? Well, they're playing good ball, but they're not hitting. That doesn't make any sense. Well, I don't think they're playing bad ball. They just can't hit. But look, here's what I think is 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 kind of propelling the optimism from. Brian Snicker. Austin Riley's got three home runs. They've played uh, 63 games. Yeah. You got to tell me in the next 99 games, Austin Riley's going to break out, right? You, yeah, I mean, he's not going to finish the season with nine home runs, right? That's what right, right. Right. That, There's that no way yeah. that he's going to finish the season with nine. I mean, uh, Matt Olson's going to finish with 25. He's going to be yeah. from 54 to 25. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's like you want to make you want to make sure they pee in the cup to see if they're drinking milk, not steroids. Right. Right, you know? right. But it's like right. you've got to hope and pray that what they have done in the past, the back of their baseball card will come through because there's limited things. That, now, I, here's the thing, Paul, I trust Alex Anthopoulos. He's gone out and gotten something every year. They've needed something every year. I don't worry about Alex. I worry about Terry McGurk and him limiting Alex mm-hmm. Anthopoulos. Mm-hmm. But I don't I don't doubt that Alex Anthopoulos is doing his due diligence right now. He's got a list like I've made of who could be possibly on the market in the next six weeks and what could happen. And so I, I don't worry about that at all. But they got to click out of this. And, you know, it's like, why go and have a game that's been good? They've done this like four or five times the last couple of weeks. So have a good game. You're like, OK, let's have another good game the right. next night. And they wet the bed the next night. Yep. It's like they can't string together. And that's exactly what we were saying happened right after the all-star break in 2021, as they were getting those players for the, before the deadline. And then they clicked on August the 6th, but it's like they clicked before, you know, they clicked in Arizona a couple of years ago when they had a team meeting and it was like, they were shit to bed. Then they were not playing good ball and Snit had to go in front of them. And they, they clicked, they clicked in 2021 you know, they – so they've done this before, and that's the danger of a team that's been in this position is you expect them to do it. Well, what if they don't? <laughs> what here's, if they don't? That's here's the, the question. Problem. Here's the question, Bill, and Andy Adams brings up the, a, a very fair point here. I want Andy and, and Eddie to get in on this. It says, what really concerns me is this coming deadline. What if AA buys, the buys, but the buys aren't strong enough, and we further decimate the already barren farm system? Yeah. Double A has a lot of work to do at the deadline. Right. So, how do you guys feel? Should he? Should he? What should he do here? Because, like Bill said, right now you're, you've got to wait and see. You've got to you've got to continue to hope this thing turns around. You well, know, well hey, hey, let me throw this in real quick. You were concerned about what he can do, right, with the talent that's out there on our team. Uh, didn't he trade Pablo Sandoval for yeah. Eddie Rosario? Right. Yeah. He traded Bryce Ball for Jock Peterson. Exactly. Hey, now, he for Von Grissom for Chris Sale. I mean, Von Grissom, yes. nothing against him. Chris Sale. Yeah. What a shit trade that was. For Inglésius and then got Jesse Chavez back. You just made my point, all that. Right. Just, His trades are ridiculous. So we so can he think, can pull a rabbit out of a hat, right. I think. And, there, and you know, there, there are people who might take a Darius Vines in a minor deal yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't, you're not, you know, and I had someone on Wednesday on the show on Wednesday um, who said, who wondered if Schwellenbach was being showcased. Well, yeah. that's what I asked. 
Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's like, well, you kind of wonder about that. Is now, Waldrop being showcased? Is Waldrop being showcased? Okay. You know, is, 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 you know, AJ Smith Shaver and Alex loves him. I can't imagine yeah. that. But I mean, you know, because here's the thing. So AJ Smith Shaver hurt. Schwellenbach Waldrop on the team. J.R. Ritchie coming back from Tommy John. Owen Murphy had Tommy John 10 yeah. days ago. Yeah. Those are your five top prospects right there. So, you know, are but are there Bryce Balls and the the DeVitos and the ones that he yeah. traded a couple of years ago that can still be in deals? Yes, there are. Mm-hmm. Don't think they're not. Now, they're not position players because the position players right now are none. I mean, yeah. I'm always for going yeah. after pitching in a draft. Yeah. Hell, even I'm saying you got to get some position yeah, players. You got to. You got to. You got to. Well, hey, but, but according to our math here from the dog father, he says that means that we're getting judged for Jesse Chavez. Right. Don't there count him out. Yeah, I mean, it's a, the, yeah, you can't count. You cannot count him out. James Caraway says Waldrip and uh, AJ Smith Straw are the only untouchables from my view. Yeah, I think if that's right. the case. I think it goes back to Andy Adams' point. You could potentially run this farm system completely dry, really dry. and and hope mm-hmm. that this thing turns around. Yeah, but you know, again, I I just think here's the deal: we have a general manager now, and this is good and bad. Okay. We have a general manager who does think more about today than tomorrow. He does. We 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 have a GM who is not as concerned about 2026 or 2028 compared to June 10th, 2024. Mm-hmm. Which, rightfully so, which rightfully so, Bill, not to cut you off. If I was him, I don't know if I'm going to be here in 2028. Right. So I'm going to make the teams right. that I am uh, the general manager of exactly. look the best. And you're I in your window, do. right, Paul? You're in your yeah. window where it's like, yeah. hey, we, we set it up perfectly to where we, you know, and you can even make the argument, well, hey, you may want to take advantage of the fact you got Max Freed right now because he may not be here come November. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it's, it's like, the, and that, but that's good and bad. I mean, this farm system is in bad shape when it comes to position players. I mean, it's all, I look today, it's like, God almighty, it's nothing. It's the shortstop nacho kid and, and he ain't got no power. I mean, uh, there's nobody. You got to have some international high a ball. Is he huh? even? Is he like high A ball right now? Who? Nacho. Nacho Alvarez. Double A. He's a double A. Yeah. Okay. And he's got a good OBP, and he's got some value, and yeah. he probably will be in the big leagues. But as far as impact players, but the other part is, Paul, you don't need a whole lot of impact position players because a lot of them are signed to long term contracts. Right. That's what James said. He said you got half the roster on ten years deals. Yeah. So. Uh, just sell the farm. Chris Adams says, go dogs. Chris, good to see you, brother. Glad you're in here with us on this Sunday evening. Oh, somebody said Andy made a good point. Oh, it's Garrett. Garrett Key says, Andy made a good point. This June keeps rolling <laughs> like it is. And it's not getting any easier. That wild card position could be in serious danger, too. They need to get going. We're at four and a half. We're got a four and a half lead in the wild card. So. Yeah, everybody's just consigned themselves to the fact, well, they'll get in. They, you know, just just I, weather the storm, keep your head above water. Everybody's just like, they're in as a wild. I don't know that. I don't I mean, know that either. I want to be wrong, Paul. I want to be rate. wrong, but there is the chance that they could not make the playoffs this year. Yeah, not at this rate. Andy Honestly. Adams says this window talk is BS. Why can't a GM create a sustainable winning product? See John Sherholtz. You had one World Series out of John Sherholtz. You made it to the dance a lot of times. You 14 won in a row. Out. 14 in a row. Yeah. Well, but John Sherholtz also had – he inherited a great product, as did Alex. And then he also uh, continued to build on very good drafting from the previous regime. Uh, where he didn't have to use a whole lot of that big cap. I mean, you know, he got Fred McGriff without Ryan Klesko. So he did his work, too, to be able to hold on to prospects. But um, And I think the Braves are built for the long term as well. I do. I mean, I, I think they are, and I think they can. I think they need to sign Max Freed yesterday. But, I mean, yeah. I, I think that that they – they are built for the long term. They're just they're just in a horrible, horrible rut. And it's been a 39 game shit show. And it's not been fun. And it, and you know they're not having fun. I mean, you know, Austin Riley's probably looking at says, God almighty, I got three home runs. It's June 10th. Okay. <laughs> and he's got to be thinking that, you know, he's a smart kid. And, right. and 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 you know, and you mentioned something earlier, Paul, about you know <clears throat> the makeup of this team and and you know. Do they have – what they do they have? Trey yeah, they need a Trey Phelps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you. Um, 
the only reason they won the World Series in 2021 is because of Jock Peterson. Jock Peterson. It, it ain't Freddie. It ain't Dansby. I'm sorry. It's Jock Peterson. And that personality coming, they were well, those. Eddie Rosario and, and Soler had a little bit to do with it. but They we did. But, I mean, Jock Peterson changed that clubhouse. Right. Jock Peterson made them feel better about each other. <clears throat> Jock Peterson made them go to dinner with each other when a certain first baseman didn't want to go to dinner. He made him go to dinner. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, he, he, he coined Peterson, the phrase "We are there them mfers." Right. I mean, and he was the one that did that. So, yep. and, and but here's the here's the downfall with right now. They've got a lot of nice players. I mean, Matt Olson, Austin Riley. They're I mean, they're great young men. They're they're nice young men. Yeah, they're, you know? they're guys you'd you'd love for your daughter to marry. Right. There you go. Do they have an asshole on this team? Well, I think his name is Chris Sale. Chris Sale. Well, he's a pitcher, but yeah. he's a pitcher. Do they need an asshole for the lineup? Maybe, you know, maybe they do. Maybe, maybe they do need that, you know, but um, so, but I'm telling you, Alex is probably thinking that same thing. He knows what Jock Peterson brought to the table. There was even a rumor. Well, maybe he's going to look at Jock again. Well, maybe he will if Arizona sells him, but I mean, I don't know if you tried to that again. That yeah, you try to go to that well again. Hey, Jock, come in here and light a fire on these same guys' asses yeah, yeah, yeah. years ago. And, not another call. Yeah, that's not going to work again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's yeah. why when you hear a, word, a name like Lewis Robert, Rivera, whatever his name is, you're like, well, it was okay. He's a nice player. You had a, yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. But you know, like give me, give me. I, I don't care what his bad average is. Give me Nick Cassianos. Bring him, bring him into that locker locker room. Well, that's, that's that's why they talked about Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham is the guy who I wanted. Yep. You know, he's but Tommy Pham like there's there's a there's a line, right? Um, I feel like Tommy Pham's way too a little too far. He might be too maybe. far, yeah, because he like, could be in jail for like actually murdering someone. Yeah. Yeah, like he's actually the real asshole. Like he's the one that he slapped Jock Peterson, or was it Jock Peterson? Or <laughs> oh, he yeah, he slapped. Yeah, yeah, him. yeah, he slapped Jock. Right. But it's 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 like you can you can be that asshole. And we want that asshole. But we don't really want like the actual true asshole. That Nobody right. likes well, me. Big no asshole, life. right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah that, you know, but like, that's what Alex Anthopoulos, I think, takes pride in with his work of trying to make sure those pieces fit. He taught, you know, like right before he got Chris Sale, he talked with a ton of people mm-hmm. about Chris Sale. Was Chris Sale a good asshole or a bad asshole? Kind of like we were talking about. I think that, I think that's what he's doing right now because he knows, I mean, how many trades are made on June 10th, right? Not, not many. Done. It's, it's no. tough. It's yeah. tough because you don't want to be desperate because they're going to ask for Schwellenbach and everybody else. If you're going to, right. If you're going to be desperate Asking now it. is desperation. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, so it's like, you know, I know this is 40 years ago, but in 1984, the Braves lost Bob Horner. They had to get somebody and they got Ken Obergfell. You know, they had to give up Ken Daly, uh, who's a good left-handed pitcher and went on to have a really good career. They were kind of desperate, you know, and they, they made that trade in May. You don't want to have to make that kind of trade if you don't have to. So I, I think I think it's still time before that stuff happens. But I, there's no question stuff's going to happen. I don't worry about that. It's just a matter of when and for who. What about uh, Dogfather here? Eddie says, here's a crazy name. Oh, Jeff Squirrel McNeil. Oh, I love it. Get dirty I, I love – he's one of those head. guys I would love that because yeah. he just slaps the ball around. He just, yeah. he's, a, he's a pain in the ass. Yeah, he's always so that, on base. That's, that's Eddie, my kind of guy right there. Yeah. No Love exit him. velo. He doesn't have a yeah. single. He average just 40 exit velo. Fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's that's that's Eddie's perfect guy right there. Luis Arise, I'm sure he was on my list, but he, uh, you've, sure been he was. Him. Yeah, you've been yeah. on him. You've been beating yeah, that. He was on him. He's yeah, on he was top on Eddie's list. Just a little He's slap, on. slap softball player. Goes out there, 35 average velo off the bat, and then gets on base. That's <laughs> who Eddie wants. He wants a team full of nine of those guys, Bill. I don't know why. Hey, I would love to play small ball. I I mean, you look at what Georgia did today. Georgia was bunning the ball. Look what the Nats did. Yes. Yes. I mean, geez. Last question here before we wrap up, guys. Uh, um, If you're not a member of UJSports.com, Dog Watch will get you in for free until the start of a fall camp. Dog Watch. Use that to get in. Uh, Fifth starter. And we talked about this a little bit last week, Bill. We've all we've said that fifth starter position is is not great, right? And I think you had the stat today. They're one and nine, uh, and I've kind of tooted that horn. I've gotten some pushback from the boys here saying we need to fix the lineup first. Don't really care about the fifth starter. I get that, but what if the Braves went out and got 
a third starter and kind of maybe move those guys back a little bit. Is that is that where they need to go? Because I guess, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, Eddie, but I think what Eddie's getting at is if we go get a fifth starter, he's not going to be of much use to us in the playoffs. So go get a guy like a third starter that can do that. But that third starter costs a hell of a lot more mm. in terms of prospects than that That's, fifth starter does. So where would you go here, Bill? Well, I, I mean, they the, the the other starter is who, what I've called him instead of the fifth starter, because that it's really Spencer Strider's spot in the rotation, right? Right. right. So yeah. Spencer Strider's spot in the rotation right now has this ERA of 7.31. Um, the other four are 2.96. So, hmm. yeah, I agree. I think, uh, you know, I think you look at Nick Pavetta, you look at Zach Eflin when he, I don't know if he's back or not. You look at someone who could possibly be, you don't want Jake Odorizzi, you know, no. I, you don't want that type of pitcher. You want someone who, can improve you and, and to be substantial. Um, plus, I still think they wonder about Lopez's ability to what he's going, what is he going to be doing in October? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I could see where they say, okay, let's get Nick Pavetta, let's say, and then August fifteenth, we kind of move Lopez the bullpen to preparing for the the, the postseason. I could see that. Um, I think Hurston Waldrop could be a bullpen piece in October. I don't think, I, you know, I, I think that's what they think about more with him in the starting that's rotation spot. Um, because I, th- I think that, I think you come out of with one inning with, it's like today he got lit up when he went around the second time. You come out of the bullpen with that thing that just drops off the table. Uh, man, you, you're pretty good, you know. And so, no, I'm with you. I, I think you've got to have a, a another pitcher. And I, I do. I believe he's going to get one. I don't know who. I mean, and but I, I think he's going to get one. And and I don't think it's necessarily going to have to cost uh, an arm and a leg. I mean, might it cost one of their bigger problems? Well, sure, maybe it does. Maybe that Schwellenbach is the one that has to go. Um, I think the interesting thing to me, though, about Schwellenbach and Waldrop and AJ is, all right, if Morton retires, which he needs to, and Max goes to the Dodgers. Who the hell's in your rotation next year? You exactly. Know? You got to be careful about that to a certain extent when it comes to trades and who you're going to trade. But again, like we said, I mean, you know, he traded Bryce Ball for Jock Peterson. Who the where the hell is Bryce Ball? He ain't even Chicago's first baseman. I can tell you that. So, so real, real, real quick, if you had the same trade, you could do for a number three. And I know it depends on who you get, right? But a number three pitcher, the same two guys go for him. Uh, utility or good outfield are the same two guys for him. Which would you do? Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's a good question. Pitcher. Really? So you think it's more important to have – Let's say it's a three-pitcher. So you think it's more important to get a three-pitcher than it is to get an outfielder that – let's say a 280 hitter? Yeah, but I, I I just think they're going to get both. I don't know. And 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 that wasn't the question. And if they (laughs) – but, well, I said – I answered the question. This is why I hang up on him, Paul, all the damn time. <laughs> Ain't in my ass. No. But no, hey, I, I, least, I, hey, hey, Bill, at least you can hang up on him. I'm in a damn group chat with him. I, I threatened to leave the other night. You I should. I'm just threatening to jump ship. Just, just put LB and on there. And he literally her, calls me at the gym and begs me to come back in the chat. I'm at the gym. <laughs> my phone rings. He says, are you dead? Did you have a heart attack? Come back in the chat, please. <laughs> so, I mean, Sometimes you have, to check, you have to check on the elderly every once in yeah, a while. Uh, here we go. He is older than I am. Yeah. But um, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm just a pitching guy. So, and I'm thinking that the offense is going to come around. I do. I'm, I'm holding out. I just can't imagine this continuing much longer. But hell, I said this three weeks ago, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Just can't when believe. It the, when you put it in the perspective of if this continues, Austin Riley will have nine home runs at the end of the season. I think all of us here, even Eddie and Andy, who are on Pessimistic Island, Pessimism Island, realize that that's not going to be a good case. Yeah, but you know what? And if that's the case, they're not going to win shit anyway. Exactly. Right, right. So this, this well, what was his over under on home runs for the year? I, I really oh, want to know. Was that 28 and a half, 32? You think and so? Half? Yeah, yeah. It'd yeah. have to be in the 20s. At least. Yeah. Okay, well, before it, we go, it, I do want to ask Bill a quick question. Bill, they keep bringing up a new starter. Like they brought up Hurston Waldrop, AJ Smith Shaver, and I know he got hurt and they had Shalom back. Why are they bringing them up for one, two starts and then sending them back down? Should they not just go with one of the guys and let them stay up and learn on the job? Well, the number one reason is because Bryce Elder sucks. He does. If Bryce Elder was worth a damn, they wouldn't have to be doing this. Number two, they say it's because they're sp- spreading them out so that these pitchers can have the extra rest so they'll be better later in the year. Um, 
I don't like that. I don't either. I just I understand why they're doing it, but but, but that in itself shows you why they need another starting pitcher that's not just a Jayco to Rizzi. Yeah. That that in itself shows you why they need another starting pitcher who can be dependable and and no, there's no guarantee of dependability as far as right. pitchers are concerned in baseball. That's a misnomer, right? But that tells you why they need another starting pitcher. They're having to space these guys. They just give Max another day. You know, Max yeah. is going to have he a full week. To start yeah. the day, yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's like they're 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 trying to space these guys out because they're afraid of what's going to happen if they have full seasons, which, again, tells you the, the vulnerability of this starting rotation right now that they're having to do this. What happened to – I mean, I just – you know, don't get me started about leave them out there until they bleed for crying out loud. The one pitcher who we probably thought going into the season would not get hurt is the one who in game six got hurt, yep. who had just had Tommy John four years ago. That's Spencer Strider. So we can't guarantee anything with these pitchers, but they're trying their best to do everything in their power. And let me tell you, they don't have any answer. I I, I asked someone in the – I asked Alex Anthopoulos, I'll just say, when Owen Murphy got hurt, what the hell's going on with these pitchers? And he said, yeah. Bill, I, I don't know if we know what to do. Now, he's not saying that because uh, – and he's not saying they don't know what to do. Right, he's saying right. there, is, there are no answers. There is no true answers. So they're making the decision to try to be even more overprotective of these starting pitchers to try to guard against something happening in August or September. I understand that. I don't know if I agree with it, but I understand it. But, again, I think – that's why they're bringing these guys up to try to space it out a little bit because they're worried. Is Max going to have a blister? Is Lopez going to lose it? I mean, you know, he he, he said he ran out of gas in the sixth inning the other night. Well, yeah. I mean, how, so is that is, is he already running out of gas when it yeah. comes to going I'm, deeper into games? You know, Charlie's showing his age, yeah, which he needs yeah. to retire. So yeah. you put all those things together, that's why I say pitcher. Well, he still needs to hit it. What? <clears throat> Excuse me. She hit Huckabee says go dogs. Appreciate go dogs. You. Go dogs. Uh, Trevor Bauer ain't coming. No, yeah, Trevor Bauer's not. That I ship has sailed for the entire league, has it yeah. not? I mean, yeah, come on. Evidently. It's yeah. By the way, Paul, if Eddie's on a, a pessimistic island, he is probably on a raft with an old soccer ball named Wilson on the corner of that raft. <laughs> hey, My best friend, baby. But the th- hey, but the thing is, Bill, for whatever reason, he's loving it over there. He's loving it. I'm telling you, he, he couldn't be happier. If this team was undefeated right now, he that wouldn't does, be happy. That doesn't right make now. me happy. None of it that makes me it, I want to be wrong. No, it, it does not make butter. me happy. It churns the butter being right ben on the box says, you know, and you know, I will be honest, a lot of it is poking the bear, which is Paul, and that's what I like to do. So Dude, he, a lot he, of it is that. that. Me too. Yeah, Eddie, he, he gets under uh, Bill, he gets under my skin worse than just about anybody. It's working. I hung, up, Paul, I hung up on him about a month ago. I'm like, I know, I listened to that. <laughs> but I was but I was right. <laughs> and guess what he did, Bill? He <laughs> everybody. I yeah. Know. He texted it to us and he told us he's like, Hey, look, I just hung up on Bill, hey, Bill hung up on me. Bill hung up on me. C L B little bitch. Oh, Bill just hung up on me. No, it wasn't that. He was, he was excited. About it. He was happy. Oh, he, he loved happy. that. He loved that. He loved oh, yeah. that. He, yeah. yeah. He and then he goes around telling everybody he's he's still right. Give me up. Yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Anyways, yeah, guys, right. we've, we've gone three minutes over our, our time limit here. We appreciate you so much for tuning in with us. It wouldn't be a great show if we didn't uh, if we didn't get uh, on each other too often there. Guys, before you leave, please hit that like button. Make sure you check out Bill Shank's show, thesuperstations.com. Jeff Dantzler's on from 12 to 1. Bill's on at 3 o'clock. And, and if they uh, make the World Series, and let's see if this time next weekend they would be – on game three, possibly. I don't know how it works. Yeah. I that, so. Again, again, we don't know, Eddie. That's the, we that's don't know, the but I think we should all wear button, button down shirts down to the navels open. All three of us. I've got if too many tattoos, Eddie. Oh. I can't do it. Prison tats. Hey guys, stay tuned for tomorrow. Rumors versus facts. I don't have prison tats, Bill. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> Hit that like button.